Good afternoon all. I hope you are well. Well, I've been doing a little bit of clearing up today and um, I thought I'd do a video of a new cigar that's uh, been launched and also that I've just received. Um, but look, you can actually see the wood. I've cleared this all out. I've actually done a little bit of um, woodwork, in fact. I put this shelf up to put my screen on it. Um, so that I could, t I had some drawers here before, which took up a lot of space. The screen used to sit on the drawers. Um, so now I can put all the stuff that was always flying around over here. It's all tucked away in the corner under the screen now. So I just have a little bit more area over here to keep things a little bit organized. Okay, so um, the pipe I've been working on today, but really haven't been. It's been a bit of a lazy day today because I've just been rather tired today. Um, but this is the, the pipe that I'm working on at the moment. Really nice, an apple, phenomenal grain. I've, I've given it one sort of stain and buffing and um, I'm gonna possibly try out my new slot cutter um, and then get the actual stem done. Um, anyway, that's by the by. I also utilized the shelf to enable me to put some more pegs up for pipes that I'm in the middle of making. So beforehand it was just three pegs there, which was a bit limiting. Anyhow, I'm rambling. This is the cigar. So this is the GQ Tobaccos Concepcion from Nicaragua. GQ Tobaccos have... Uh, teamed up with um, a Nicaraguan blending house and they've produced two lines of cigars. I do have both but I don't have them both down here. So I'm starting off with the Concepcion which is um, I guess you'd say like a Connecticut type wrapper but it's a Claro, you know, very close to Claro um, colouring on the wrapper. Um, in terms of the range that they have available, they have three in the uh, Concepcion and there's three in the other one, which is a, a Maduro. Um, the ones, the Vitolas which they have for the Concepcion are the Gordo, which is a six inch by 60 ring gauge, the Robusto, which is a five by 50, which is this one, five inches by 50 ring gauge, and the smaller Corona, which is a five and a half inch by 42 ring gauge, which is like a Mareva kind of Vitola. Um, used to be the classic kind of uh, sized cigar. I think now Robusto is probably m more favoured by many, many people. Um, the intention of these ranges, um, I guess, is to provide you with an economical smoke. To buy a Cuban cigar here in the UK, or even a non-Cuban cigar, even if you bought one of the main brands of New World Cigar, they're cheaper than Cuban, but they're still a fair price. You'll still be looking at spending between 15 and 20 pounds for a half decent cigar. Um, so to be able to buy one for this Robusto size is eight pounds, seven pound 99. That's very, very economical uh, considering uh, it's retail. So for a retail price at seven ninety nine 99 is a really, really good price. So if you can actually put together a blend which is reasonable, you may not expect it to be the best smoke in the world at that money. It, it doesn't intend to be. It's not expecting to be. It's not trying to be at seven ninety nine. But if it's reasonable, um, and it's the type of thing that you could just smoke sort of any time of the day, um, especially if you're in a workshop or in a kind of a busy kind of situation where you're not really focusing on the cigar too much, but you want to have a smoke, I would have, I would say that it falls in that kind of bracket. It falls in that kind of region in terms of why people might buy these cigars. Um, now the wrapper, the aroma on the wrapper is quite spicy, sweet spice. It's quite musty, it's quite tangy, it's it's quite Cuban-ish, I have to say. It doesn't even smell young, although it certainly is. I've had it in my humidor just a few days. I like to keep them in my humidor for a few days after they've travelled. So even though they've only just come from GQ Tobaccos, but... Um, it's good to just leave them to settle down a bit again for a few days. 
So the wrapper itself, I mean, first of all, just looking at it, it's got a pretty well rolled um, finish to it. It's, it looks pretty neat, no veins. Uh, triple cap. There, you can see the triple cap. Um, the band is, is fairly uh, rudimentary. Um, you wouldn't expect them to be spending fortunes on producing these flashy gold embossed bands that you get nowadays on the New World Cigars. Um, you know, you'd much rather they spend the money on the tobacco than they do on the ring, for sure. A little bit of a chocolatey note, perhaps, to the wrapper, together with all the, that sweet, spicy aroma. Now, the foot. The foot is pure snuff. The foot does have a, quite a young, fresh aroma, a bit of ammonia, and definitely like a very tobacco-y, tobacco dust kind of snuff kind of aroma. A raw snuff aroma without any kind of oils or menthol or anything like that but just raw snuff it's got a very it's got a very um, almost abrasive aroma coming from the foot <coughs> so out here I have my Zycar um, I don't know what you call this one the butterfly or heart shape or whatever you call it but it's a uh, reliable cutter and I will be using my LCS Briars cigar ashtray made for me by Pipe Grump Josh thanks Josh <laughs> perfect draw absolutely spot on Mm, the dried raw has a very interesting flavour. It tastes of licorice. Very interesting. Not very tobacco-y. Not very cedary. Unusual. I don't think I've tasted that in a cigar before. The flame is a bit wavy because my fan is on, a little bit humid at the moment. I should also say that this cigar has actually been here since out here since yesterday, so it's had a chance to dry out a little bit, even though it's been in the cello wrapper. Um, being in the cello wrapper, the cellophane bag, the little bag that it comes in, also helps to concentrate the aroma um, from the wrapper so that doesn't necessarily reflect what the scar is going to actually taste like it's sometimes it's just a concentration of aromas which build up inside that cellophane wrapper so the aim is when you're lighting is not to really touch the cigar but just let it lick lick at the cigar just beneath it and it will catch give it a good toasting at the bottom try to keep it neat if you can just from an aesthetic point of view, and so that it doesn't carbonate, carbonize uh, the wrapper further up. So, first draw is very herby, very herbal, vegetal kind of uh, flavour, but it does have quite an oily finish, a bit of a coffee, tobacco-y kind of finish on the tongue, but it is quite harsh. There is a harsh edge to it. It's got good flavours, but there is a harsh edge, without a doubt. Well, I'm going to let it settle in. And I'll come back in in a couple of minutes. Well, we're a few minutes in, um, and uh, it's settled down quite nicely. 
most of that harshness is now gone, thankfully, I'm happy to report. Really building nice ash, nice, it's stacking nicely, a good burn line, <clears throat> draw is phenomenal, smoke output is good. It's got a very uh, sort of middle of the road, beefy, oily kind of feel in the mouth, I have to say. Um, really interesting. I mean, that licorice flavor which I got on the dry draw is not there at all. I don't know what that was. Um, I guess it was just the sort of the herby kind of flavor that this leaf was giving off, but um, uh, this blend was giving off. But the um, that's what stands out for me at the moment is is the oiliness on on your tongue. The retrohale is quite a savoury affair. Um, you don't get that much sweetness through the retrohale. At the moment, it's not a particularly sweet cigar. Um, at the moment, it's quite white peppery, quite savoury. There's, As you draw, there's a bit of sweetness, but it disappears immediately, and it gives way to more of a um, savoury kind of white pepper cracker, like a savoury cracker kind of flavour. Um, it, it needs, for me, it needs a little bit of sweetness to round the things, to round things out, and, and it would actually have a very nice balance to it. But uh, we'll see how it develops. But so far, so good. Um, other than that little lack of sweetness, it's it's pretty good, especially for the money. It's still a young cigar, and I have no doubt it'll improve with some time. But. Um, so far, so good. Let's see how the rest of it goes. Um, sorry, I managed to spill a bunch of dye over my hands, but um, <clears throat> well, well into the second third now. Uh, the ash is quite light. It's sort of the ash by itself really quite early on. What I will say is it has a very pleasant aroma as you bring the cigar up to your mouth. There's the, the smoke that wafts into your nose. It's got a very Cuban type of aroma very nice uh, Cuban cigar type aroma there. Um, as I got into the second third I did notice a very slight increase in sweetness on the draw. It doesn't last, it's still quite a savoury cigar but it's not like um, some of the uh, New World cigars I find that they've become very peppery, very a lot of kind of chilli heat and I find them really quite hard to, to smoke whereas this one um, it's savoury, but it doesn't have that chilli heat, which is, um, um, at least, you know, it doesn't have that, uh, if you like that chilli kind of peppery heat, then, you know, there's plenty of New World cigars to go for, and you'll enjoy this one too, but it's, at least it's not over the top when it comes to that. It is quite full in the mouth. It's still young. There is still some ammonia there, without a doubt. There is a bit of harshness there, but it's not um, its not a, an unsavoury smoke. Um, into, and I, I mean that with a small s. Um, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not a bad smoke, I would say that. It'll be interesting to see how they develop over time. Um, I will make a point of getting some more and just leaving them in the humidor and see how they fare over time. Um, the way it stacks is very impressive. Um, the, co the construction is, is um, almost faultless on this cigar. I really have no complaints. Considering the price, uh, the construction is phenomenal. In the final third, time to remove the band. Burn line, a little bit wavy, but nothing too uh, terrible. Um, I've not had to relight it at all. I've not touched it up either. There was a touch more sweetness there. It's a little bit richer. I am detecting a little bit of nicotine now. It's got a good solid tobacco foundation with a little bit of mustiness there.
a little bit of almond coming through now. Possibly the cigar's coming to the, to its end, to its natural end. Um, as you get into the final third, sometimes you get that almond paste kind of flavour as it transitions over to starting to get a little bit bitter. Um, but um, if you purge the cigar, sometimes you can extend its life. So we shall see how it goes. Next time I come, probably will be the final um, clip, uh, but we shall see how we go. You can see it's kind of straightening out its own line by itself there. Focus is struggling a little bit, there we go. All right, catch you in a bit. Well, we're approaching the end of the cigar. It's um, that uh, almond paste has disappeared. I did purge it, so it perhaps uh, refreshed it a little. I have slowed down on smoking it so that it doesn't overheat. It's a fine balance. When when you start to get towards the end of a cigar, sometimes it tries to go out, so you puff it on it. Problem with that is that you overheat the cigar. You're at risk of overheating the cigar which then again makes it bitter. So it's a, it's a fine balance between keeping it alight and not overheating it. Uh, but it seems to be going just fine. Um, really nice stacking there. Um, and uh, you can see the vein um, along the side of the ash there. Um, the flavors have really melded now into a really nice balanced flavor. Not a lot of sweetness, like I've said before. There is a bit there, just, just about enough to make it palatable. Um, so that it's still enjoyable. There's still that oily um, sensation on the tongue, which has been there throughout. It's been a feature from beginning to end. Um, the flavor, as I say, is more balanced now, but it's still that savory edge. It's still got that uh, kind of savory cracker kind of um, taste to it. I'm still gonna come in again because I think I can smoke this quite a bit more. And uh, hopefully the next one um, will be able to wrap things up. Okay, well, I'm still enjoying the cigar. But it is warming up. It hasn't turned bitter, which is nice. So let's uh, try to see if we can summarize things. Um, so I'll go straight into the uh, into the uh, marking. Um, construction, visual construction. First off, very very nice. Um, as I showed at the beginning of the uh, video, uh, quite a claro colored wrapper, a nice sort of creamy coffee kind of color. Um, very smooth, very well rolled, um, an attractive cigar. I, I like the Robusta size, it's my favorite size, um, and it looked like a really classy cigar. Um, sometimes, especially New World cigars, the wrappers tend to be quite thick um, and quite bumpy, whereas this one really did resemble um, a Cuban cigar, you know, actually a Cuban cigar with a better kind of, I'm not going to go as far as to say um, like the uh, Bahikes or the, um, the the upper range ones, the um, my mind's gone blank. But the upper range ones, which are very very expensive, the special release ones, um, not quite as good as that, but very close. Uh, a very you know they, they are very well put together. Um, the the wrapper really really sort of seals everything in a very neat package that's a good way of putting it so visual construction is really very good i've got no complaints triple cap um no bumpy sort of areas um neat seams can't really complain on that um i'd go so far as to say a nine out of ten for the visual construction mechanical construction um the draw has been top notch um from beginning to end can't complain with that. Smoke output's been excellent throughout. Some cigars, you know, you can sometimes feel that you have to draw two or three times before you get a decent mouthful of smoke. That wasn't the case with the cigar. It really has a very rich, what some people call a chewy kind of smoke output. Really thick, viscous smoke in your mouth. Um, uh, so the draw superb um, in terms of the fill um, how it's rolled 
very consistent and a, a normal good amount of give to the cigar, the sponginess, um, not too full, not too loose, um, very well consistently rolled, um, very impressed with the mechanical construction all around. Um, again, um, I the burn line um, has been very good throughout. It, there's been some slight deviations here and there, but I have not had to touch up this cigar. Um, and where it did deviate, it tended to correct itself on its own. Um, the ash, a little bit light, um, but stacking very, very nicely. A little bit flaky, as I say, not light, flaky. Um, it is light coloured as well, which is usually a good sign. Um, so again, on, on the mechanical construction, I can't really fault it. Um, so again, I'm, I'm quite happy to say uh, a 9 out of 10 on the mechanical construction. To be honest, maybe 9.5. You know, I actually can't really find fault in it, um, in the construction side of things. Um, and I'm trying to think why there's any reason why I shouldn't give it a 10. And in my mind, I'm not, simply because it's a cheap cigar. And actually, that's really wrong, come to think of it. I'm thinking as I'm speaking. And um, I think actually it deserves a 10 on, on mechanical construction, um, not on the visual. The visual construction was very, very nice, but not quite a, a 10. So 9 is a fairer mark for that, but mechanical construction, I can't fault it. Um, flavours. So the flavours, is it's really early on. Um, I think that you have to also take it in context um, of the type of cigar it's, it's intended to be. It's not intended to be a, a flagship cigar. Um, but nevertheless, whenever I do um, videos, it's based on that particular cigar, how I've enjoyed that particular smoke, whether it's a £5 cigar or a £50 cigar. So I'm going to do the marking on that basis as well here. For me, it's quite a savoury cigar. Um, there is a little touch of sweetness, but it's really, for, me, for my personal palate, it's not enough. Um, so the marking that I'll give on, on the flavour is based on my personal preference. So if you prefer a, a drier, more savoury smoke, then you know you, you'll, you'll rate this higher. If a sweet cigar is a must for you, a sweet chocolatey cocoa flavours is a must for you, then you might even take it lower than me. So I'm, I'm somewhere in between, in between the two. Um, um, the, what I would say here is that sometimes when I get a savoury cigar, oftentimes it's really peppery as well. Uh, as I was kind of talking about a little bit earlier on about that chilli heat, I didn't get that on this cigar, so for me, um, it didn't have that negative aspect to it, um, as far as my palate is concerned. Um, I think that it will settle down over time, and the sweetness might come through a little bit more as the the um, tobacco matures a little bit more as it ages. Um, but I think this is a savoury cigar with just a touch of sweetness, and it kind of stayed true to that throughout the cigar. Um, but in terms of my own palate, so so there was. Right at the beginning, a bit of a herby, a vegetally kind of flavour. That kind of went away straight away, um, you know, within a few puffs. It was very um, abrasive at the beginning, um, but that went away also after a few puffs. Um, and, that, and it settled in quite nicely to its flavour profile. And it kind of stayed pretty much the same throughout. There wasn't much of an evolution um, other than in that first third. Um, I didn't notice a, a particular evolution um, other than the strength, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, so flavour-wise, it's a, a fairly linear kind of experience. Um, it's savoury. As I said, it's like a savoury cracker um, with a very, very faint touch of sweetness. Um, there's that oily texture that you get on your tongue, which can be quite nice if you like that kind of thing. I don't look for it in particular, but it, it was there, certainly, um, and it's, uh, it just added to the experience. Certainly not a negative. Um, there was touches of coffee at times, but certainly a good tobacco flavour throughout, and, and that's a big plus for this uh, cigar. If it wouldn't have had a decent um, flavour in terms of tobacco and that little bit of coffee, I think I would not have enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, so flavour-wise, for me, um, I'm going to go for about a 7. Um, I would like, for my personal preference, for it to have been sweeter. Um, and it may well, over time, develop that sweetness. We'll see. I guess I'll revisit those at some point in the future. Um, I would also like to try the other Vitolas, just to see if there's any difference because of the proportions of 
binder and filler um, and see if that changes um, their flavor profile. So a seven for the flavor. In terms of uh, fullness, um, quite a full cigar. Um, it really does fill your senses in your mouth um, and it starts off as it means to go on. Um, so I would say it's a medium plus pretty much from the off and gets towards full at the end of the cigar. Um, in terms of strength, um, very similar experience. It was, um, I, I wouldn't say that I got any 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 nicotine hit in the first half, but you could see that it was going in that direction. Uh, and many times, not always, but many many times, I would say even as much as nine times out of ten, the fullness and the strength go hand in hand. Not always, but most of the time. And that was the same here. Um, and certainly now in the second half of the cigar, certainly in the final third, the strength is for me. I'm getting quite a bit of nicotine. Um, certainly in the medium plus um, kind of range, approaching full in terms of, full, in terms of strength. Um, so overall mark. So just to summarize all of those marks, essentially um, this cigar uh, for the money it, it is an absolute blinder. The, the flavor profile doesn't happen to match my personal preference. If it would, it would be an absolute stunner um, for that kind of money, really it would. Um, when I talk about sweetness in cigars, I'm talking about uh, like the Oliva Serie V Milano, Milano, which has a nice uh, sweetness uh, along with the, the New World sort of type flavor. And that sweetness really makes it an enjoyable cigar. The undercrowns, those kind of things, the, the sun-grown undercrown, very nice sweetness there. It's rich, it's tangy, but it's, it's sweet as well. And that's what I like in a cigar. Um, so really for me, the only detractor here is the flavor profile. Um, a little bit more sweetness and this would be a bang on cigar, an absolute bargain. Um, if you don't need that heavy sweetness, then I would really highly, highly recommend this cigar for you um, at that price, certainly if you're in the UK. Overall, Mark, um, I'm going to give it uh, an eight, eight and a half, um, because the cigar is, is actually a very good cigar. Um, it's just the flavor for me, it, it's missing in the flavor. It would get a higher mark if the flavor was more bang on. Um, and I'm hopeful that with time that will improve. Um, it, th that flavor mark is simply my preference, not necessarily um, a bad mark against the cigar itself. That's just the... All right, the cigar's gone out now. Um, that's just the profile of this particular cigar. It'll be interesting to see over time if it does change its profile a little bit. So overall mark, eight to eight and a half. Um, I'm very, very impressed with it. Um, because of the price, really, it, it's just quite, uh, it's a no-brainer as far as I'm concerned. Um, I think it will need time in the humidor just to get rid of some of that harshness, um, like any cigar, any fresh cigar. Um, so being as it is now, while it's pretty new, um, it is really quite impressive and hopefully that um, indicates some improvement over time. So I hope you've enjoyed that um, GQ Tobacco's Nicaraguan Conception Robusto Cigar. Thank you very much for joining me. Catch you on the next one.